and with the breakdown on what's happening inside Davos, with the breakdown on what's going on geopolitically, Infowars.com reporter Wayne Madsen. He also has WayneMadsenReport.com. He's also a best-selling author. Find his books there. Um, he's going to be covering a lot of the election. In fact, I think I'm going to try to send him to the RNC and DNC. We're getting accredited uh, right now. I'll probably go to some of those as well, along with David Knight and Jakari Jackson, Leanne McAdoo, and some of the other crew this year. But And, and of course, our political correspondent, um, Richard Reeves, up in Iowa, who's been popping in. I mean, we're building a real news organization here. And Wayne Madsen's former of the NSA, of course, and also written for Miami Herald, you name it, some of the biggest newspapers in the country. I'm not going to go over all of those. But the two big articles that I saw, and the reason I wanted to get him on today, was one yesterday on Infowars.com, and now today, report globalists covering up jihadist violence. International agreement between some nations to downplay migrant crisis. Yeah, they're agreeing not to report it. I mean, it really shows this how they use political correctness to cover up an attempted genocide against cultures. Report, U.S. harbors ISIS-linked terrorist. U.S. Uh, changes status of ISIS-linked group to protected organization. Well, of course, they've been running the whole thing. But how does it break that narrative when somebody like Donald Trump comes out and talks about it? Look how far we've come. From Wayne and I talking about the Syrian civil war five years ago starting Western-backed, and Al Nusra being Al Qaeda to today, we're not called conspiracy theorists. Well, Wayne's been to Damascus. He's been over there during the Civil War. He's been to Libya. So, you know, that's what these journalists do is actually get on the ground, not just repeat what the White House says. So, so much is going on. The global markets are melting down. As soon as Soros came out three weeks ago and said, the plunge is here, everyone dutifully started the plunge because it's staged. And they now admit that three years ago in Rolling Stone. And the New York Times, okay, the stock market's rigged. Okay, the currency rates are rigged. Okay, the interest rates are rigged with LIBOR. What a world now, though, where I thought they'd all go to jail for it or something might stop. Instead, they have BLM meetings and forestry meetings where they go, we steal money in houses. We're proud of it. I mean, again, it's like cartoons when I was a kid that would show the Legion of Doom having an award ceremony and giving criminals awards. And, and, and I thought, and people doing horrible things, awards, and I thought, that's ridiculous. But the more I grow up, I see, I go, wait, whoever wrote that knew what they were talking about. I mean, let's give Obama five more peace prizes. I mean, what a sick world. Wayne, I kind of set the table here for the hour on how crazy everything's getting. Uh, just generally on the state of the world uh, and where you see it going and, and, and just all of it. And then we'll drill into Davos, drill into the jihadis. Uh, and the rest of it. But first off, Happy New Year. Uh, great to have you here with us. I guess you've already been on since the year started, but here we are, my friend. It is going to turn out to be a very interesting uh, year, uh, both domestically and internationally. Uh, you mentioned the uh, latest report, uh, which was commissioned by uh, the British. It was another one of these British judges they hold out of the old Bailey in London. You know, that's a place at V, you know, and V for Vendetti blew it up. Uh, but they hauled some judge out who came up with, said that, oh, Vladimir Putin killed this guy, Litvinenko. When it, it clearly, it's, it, it, it was all signs pointed to Litvinenko's employer, a guy named Boris Berezovsky, uh, being responsible for getting rid of Litvinenko because Litvinenko was probably a double agent. And he wanted to get rid of him because Litvinenko found out too much about this Berezov, he was an exiled Russian um, oligarch who had been the king of all Russian media at one point in time. And like many of these oligarchs, like Khodorkovsky and Nezhlin, they all hightailed out of Russia because they owed taxes. And, well, sure, uh, I and mean, this guy was pretty low level, and they've made such a big deal for 10 years, now squarely blaming it on Putin. And then I read the report, no evidence, no nothing. Why haven't the Russians come out then and said... He was our double agent. Why do they have this policy of never even defending themselves? Well, I mean, it, it gets into the intelligence thing because if they admitted to that, you know, he had, he had infiltrated the Chechen movement, for example, uh, the exiled Chechens abroad. Now, the, this is the same movement that uh, spawned uh, Tamerlan and Jokar uh, uh, Sarniev, the two accused bombers in the Boston Marathon bombing. So... Uh, you know, the Russians had a lot of intelligence on them, too, all of it, which was ignored by our FBI, I would uh, add, and also the Obama administration. But but they try to say that because there was traces of polonium being left all over London because 
this guy Litvinenko supposedly ate some uh, a radioactive sushi that was sprinkled with polonium dust in some Japanese restaurant in London. That that by the way, that same polonium was found in Berezovsky's office. You know the the British. Now this is the same British. Uh, a line of inquiry that ruled that uh, Dr. David Kelly, the WMD expert, actually committed uh, suicide, that he wasn't murdered. Everybody in, in England knows he was murdered. This is the same uh, judicial line of inquiry that said that uh, there was nothing to the Tony Blair dodgy dossier. These about, are the people uh, that covered up the pedophile scandal that goes all the way to Prince Charles. Jimmy Savile, they covered that up the whole. So why should we believe anything out of some... British uh, wanker judge that comes out with some some uh, 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 report. You know, reports are a dime a dozen in, in in Britain, and they're easily paid for, as we've seen with about ten of them. Well, obviously, getting major traction is just a way to demonize Russia and accelerate tensions. Are they going to be successful kicking off a new Cold War? Seems like the American people and Donald Trump and everybody else just don't want to have bad relations with Russia and are sick of all this. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, R Russia, and now, now we've got the the the, the a, a sabers being rattled uh, against China. I, I would note that I saw a photograph of the Australian Prime Minister Turnbull uh, being entertained by the commander of, of the U.S. Pacific Forces in Pearl Harbor. Uh, they had a photo op outside the admiral's home. I noticed that the admiral didn't have his cover on, his uh, his headgear. Uh, and uh, what's happened to the Navy? That, that guy was out of uniform. When I was an officer, we could never, or any, no, no Navy person could be outside without a cover. So he decides to ditch his cover um, uh, so he can get a photo op because he was trying to tell the Australian prime minister, look, uh, the Chinese are going to turn the Pacific into a Chinese lake. You know, we got to uh, get to battle stations and, and, and rev up for a war with the Chinese. I mean, how, how retro can you get with these I, I can understand why the admiral would be pushing that because he, you know, that he's looking to get a job with Lockheed Martin after he retires. So the more no, there won't, won't be anywhere to spend better. the money if we have a nuclear war. Well, you know, the, look, the history of Pearl Harbor and admirals isn't one that I would uh, put on my resume. They have a pretty bad history over there. Um, when they should be worried about wars, uh, they aren't. Uh, they got they got hit with the Japanese attack, and when they they shouldn't be. Uh, worried about wars or they're beating the war drums or they're you know they spent too much time well we know the, the uh, truth the admirals the, the admirals wow. stood down Hano. sure but we know the truth they stood down to get us into the war not defending the japanese but that we set them up sent the carriers out and you know the yeah. spanish american war in 1898 that was a false flag with the sinking of the main yeah and and of course uh, on december 7 1941 all of uh, admiral harris's you know predecessors over there were you know, sleeping off a hangover from Saturday night. Nothing ever changes in Pearl Harbor, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, it is pretty. Now, expanding on this now, uh, before we get into the radical Islamist system, what's behind that and the flooding of, of, of Europe and the rest of the world with them and some of the interesting discoveries you found about U.S. harboring ISIS groups inside the U.S. I mean, this should be a national story, uh, and hopefully listeners can make it one so we can force some sunlight on this. Election 2016, Hillary, how much trouble is she in? You think they'll really run Biden with Elizabeth Warren, or what's the intel Wayne Madsen's got on that right now? Well, the the DNC uh, is getting they're getting nervous about Hillary. The you mentioned earlier the email scandals not going away. Now it turns out that she had higher than top secret. That's that's compartment and information, and people have gone to jail for long periods of time when they misuse that type. Petraeus of, uh, did far less. Yeah, even 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 stuff that's not compartmented, people have gone to uh, a prison for a long time. So that that's a festering sore that's not going away. I'll tell you, there's also a, a documentary out called Weiner about Anthony Weiner, and apparently there's some really awkward information in there about Hillary Clinton and uh, her longtime assistant Weiner's wife Huma Abedin. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, well, many years ago, I happen to have been in Hollywood. Uh, well. Um, up in uh, Beverly Hills, um, when Hillary was there, it was a three-day weekend. It was actually a, the uh, Columbus Day weekend, and the rumors were rampant around uh, uh, Hollywood and Beverly Hills about what Hillary was doing out there at the Beverly Hills Hotel. I let people's imagination figure out the rest of that story, but I think that's when they say this movie's awkward. That's what they're talking about. Yes, there's an awkward 
there's an awkward situation with Hillary's marriage, as there is with Huma Abedin's marriage to Anthony Weiner. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, looking at the Islamic situation, Wayne Madsen, which should we tackle first when we come back? Report U.S. harbors ISIS linked terrorist, or do you want to hit report globalists covering up jihadist violence? Well, I think that that's the one uh, that uh, is really of immediate concern for people in Europe. Then we can get it. the other one segues easily into the other story. All right, Wayne Madsen, stay there. I'm Alex Jones. You're watching the Info War. You're listening to the Info War, and you're part of it. Spread the word. We analyze breaking news. We cover other people's breaking stories. Um, we're not in competition with the rest of the media. We're in competition with media that lies to expose them. And more and more, the news we cover, what we focus on, is becoming the talking points around the country and the world. That shows how weak the establishment media has gotten. I'll talk about that more coming up in the next segment. If you've got questions for Wayne Madsen on any subject, we'll take a few calls. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Going back to Wayne, uh, before he leaves us, he'll be with us with McAdoo as well to the end of the hour. We're going to look at what's happening in Flint, but, but later. It's all part of this overall breakdown of the civilization, but also breakdown in trust in the system. I don't want to not have trust in a system, but you can't trust a predatory system. It has to die, even though that's going to be painful. I want a social compact. I, I'm not an anarchist. But what we have is totally unequitable. And if you look at Davos, with the richest people in the world that have half the world's wealth, almost all of them got it through inside government contract deals, crony deals, lecturing the free market that it did something to destroy what's left of it and transfer the money themselves while flooding Europe and the United States with unskilled workers and radical jihadists, obviously destabilization is the plan, but do they think we're really this dumb to go along with it? Or is it such a will to 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 break our back that, that they just don't care? Wayne, Wayne Madsen, I'm kind of ranting here, but, but this ties into your report. Um, in fact, we'll cover more of the Islamic stuff in a moment. Davos, I, I mean, these guys really are uh, the bad guys meeting, as you've exposed, and they're just so arrogant up there lecturing Westerners on how we're not paying enough taxes and how we're the reason there's inequity when it's the elite or the authors of it. Well, I look at the uh, where they're meeting in Davos and you got, uh, you know, snow drenched mountains all around that village. And uh, if there was ever a need for an avalanche, I can't think of a better <laughs> time than now. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, this is Davos and Bilderberg and. You know, they, these people, they love to get together and and, and plot behind these closed uh, doors at these these uh, uh, she she resort areas. And uh, they lecture the rest of the world. Yeah, rest assured that George Soros is there. He wouldn't miss a Davos meeting. And probably that weasel Henry Kissinger has been wheeled in there in his wheelchair uh, from his private jet. So, yeah, you've got all these insidious players, maybe. Maybe, maybe even David Rockefeller at 100 years old is somewhere uh, shaking in the corner somewhere. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they're disgusting people. They don't have any uh, relation to the real world. Yet they, what the decisions they make affect the entire planet. And Bilderberg Group and Davos member Peter Sutherland that heads up the UN program on migration, he admits he's opening the borders to, quote, in the culture of Europe. Well, if they're going to do that, why not bring people in from, you know, like I said, Brazil or something that, you know, aren't wanting to run to put bags on women's heads and murder everyone? Why are they in a love affair with radical jihadis? You know, it, sometimes it's it doesn't even pay to try to psychoanalyze these people. And, and they may just be, in, in fact, they may be insane. Uh, they often talk about the insanity of the Nazi regime in Germany. And, and if, if there was insanity there... Why can't there be insanity with these people? Undoubtedly. Uh, I mean, why would Soros go on 60 Minutes and say, I'm not ashamed of being a Nazi collaborator? Yeah, the, the, yeah. I mean, that's an exact quote. That's mental illness. Because he's not even ashamed of it. He should at least say he's ashamed, even if he isn't. Well, and Henry Kissinger is saying power is the ultimate aphrodisiac. I mean, what, what normal person would say things like that? Uh, yeah, these, these people are probably clinically insane. However, they've got a lot of influence, they've got a lot of money, 
and uh and, and you know and the media is over there you know